Hey guys, you're watching Boondocking with Dennis. Baby calf. One of the things I really like about this area is we have the beaches and we have the coast and sometimes you think you're in Florida and then you look on the other side of the road across from the water and there's cows. Cows in swampy areas. Cows along the fence. Happy that it rained. Happy that they got some good food. Everything got green. Yeah. Happy they can poop on something new. <laughs> I like cows. And I like old barbed wire fences too, where it's like a tree limb strung up. That's pretty much Texas. Pretty cool. I came over here to Goose Island State Park. Wanted to get amongst the trees and the mosquitoes are definitely out, but nothing too bad yet. I can tell from experience, mosquitoes think I'm um, absolutely delicious. I would say, just from what I've driven around so far, maybe about 10% of the sites are occupied. I'm filming this portion on a Sunday, so Probably a lot of people have already headed out. Heading home. But there's still a few. That's pretty. I got three or four tag along mosquitoes in the truck. That's okay. I did want to say Good morning to my friends Bill and Sandy. Very nice people. Hopefully I can meet them the next time I'm up in their area. Bill and Sandy, good morning. Do me a favor, friends. Roll my intro. <laughs> I bet this is a popular area with the mosquitoes. And just past this is the park entrance road. And then in the distance you can see that reserve development that is new within the last 10 years roughly. Something like that, I'm guessing. So they actually do a good job here at the state park. It's surrounded by houses and all area around it kind of got built up but they do a good job of camouflage and everything there's a nice shaded area big old live oak and at the back of it on both sides the trail kind of cuts through there little hiking trail you can get a map over at the ranger station of the park and show you where the trails are and there's several entry points. Alright, fair warning. I'm going to tell a horrible, horrible dad joke. You might want to switch over and watch uh, The Life of Nicole. That's a good YouTube channel. And she does live streams on Facebook. Life of Nicole. What did the science book say to the math book? Man, buddy. You got problems. <laughs> that is a great dad joke.
that is so not funny that it's funny. <laughs> ah, trees. Still in Goose Island State Park, guys. Some empty cabanas right along the water here, right along, uh, right about where Aransas Bay meets Copano Bay. There's uh, some people, but man, it's weird to see this many open cabanas. These uh, cabanas, if you will, do have water and electric, so you can get a spot back in the wooded section or get a spot right here along the bay. There's the bathhouses. Or if you want, you can get both. You can pay for both. That's up to you. <laughs> and it's a gorgeous day. Hey, I just got an email from Kathy and Dave. And they uh, wanted to meet me and invited me to lunch. And um, so I don't want anyone to think I'm picking on Kathy or Dave on this. Very nice. That would be a perfect invitation for a normal person. <laughs> That's not the invitation for me. Um, especially this time of day, guys. It's 11 o'clock. I still have to post two videos. I got to finish making one and then post a video by 1 o'clock, which requires getting back to civilization, which usually means the Walmart parking lot where there's Wi-Fi, and then uh, make the next morning video. So it's just a busy time of the day for me. I know some people think I stare at the water all day, which would be an awesome way to spend the day. But um, yeah, so I emailed Kathy and Dave back and let them know that I was filming over in Goose Island and that I would email them when I'm back in Rockport and hopefully they'll have time to swing by the Wally World parking lot and say hello but yeah guys I don't really go out with people to lunch or dinner or normal things that normal people enjoy I don't talk on the phone I live in my truck uh, I'm a crazy person <laughs> and uh, I hope that's okay with everyone but hopefully I'll get to meet Kathy and Dave when I get back to civilization. Best conversations are held in the Walmart parking lot. Everyone notices that. And I'll tell you why. I just saw a little blue crab running across the road and he was hauling something. From a distance I thought it was a bird and wondering why he wasn't taking off. I need to get out my selfie stick that I really wish I would have played with before this. He's trying the old, if I'm not moving, you can't see me trick. I might be half blind and not know how my selfie stick works, but I can see you, buddy. <laughs> I'll just leave him alone. Let him have a good day. Now, my reason for not talking on the phone started long before... I started boondocking. I worked at Apria Healthcare. I spent 8, 10, 12 hours a day on the phone. Hated it, but the pay was really good. For years and years, whenever I got a phone call at home, it was bad news. It was some type of drama. It was someone needing money. It was long daily conversations with relatives who were absolutely miserable and wanted to spread that misery. So I just stopped talking on the phone. So I'm sure I would have came to that conclusion by now boondocking, but honestly the last person that I talked on the phone with 
when I wasn't refilling a prescription <laughs> was a friend of mine who uh, had a family member pass away and just needed to talk to somebody. I absolutely hate talking on the phone. So to get me on the phone, it's got to be something, you know? Now, as far as meeting people, was never really a fan of that meeting. When, when you meet a stranger, and I have done it since I started boondocking, um, you're committing a half hour, 45 minutes, maybe longer. Let me just zoom out just a little, guys. Of your life with, with someone who might be the nicest person in the world or someone that you don't want to spend two minutes with. I've had conversations where people come up and say hi and they're awesome or they're not. <laughs> I, I don't want to commit that time to anyone. Uh, I don't go indoors a whole lot. If I eat a meal indoors, it's someone sent me a Chili's gift card and I'm the first person in the door and uh, can go in and eat and get what I want and get out of there pretty quick, you know? Bumpy road, guys. We're gonna go around here. There's a lady. So that's why I don't go out to eat with people. Probably the last time I met someone, I'm trying to think. Um, now, a, a great example is, of meeting awesome people is the Phillips family. Uh, they are like family to me now. And uh, I met them through YouTube. And I've been to their place three times. Um, they've been down to visit me twice. So, uh, almost two different groups. You know, so I really enjoy that family. I'm comfortable around them. And... Uh, good people so don't invite me out to lunch or dinner <laughs> and I think this is a surprise to a lot of people I I got stuff to do too I got stuff to do too <laughs> no you don't yeah I do I mean there was that guy a month ago him and his wife came down to stare at the water and he was like, what do you do all day? Just stare at the water? I'm like, what do you think you're doing right now? Look at that horse. Oh, it's a dog. <laughs> well, yeah, like I said, guys, normal people stuff. Not for me. I live in my truck. I, I got a pee jar. Do you have a pee jar? Yeah. Come ask me to lunch when you get a pee jar. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for riding along today with me. Thanks for tolerating my existence. Thanks for putting up with my uh, my rubbish, as my friend Anita would say from Flower Folk Farm. Thanks for watching. <laughs>